So welcome to course entitled Advanced Geotechnical Engineering in Module 5 Stability of Slopes. So this is Module 5 Lecture 5 on Stability of Slopes. So in the previous lecture we have understood about the effect of rainfall on stability of slopes and with an increase in rainfall intensity we have seen that the factor of safety decreases upon increase in the pore water pressure within the slope. And having understood about the different causative factors for this slope instabilities in this lecture we will look into various methods for enhancing the stability of slopes. This means slope stabilization techniques what are the various means of ensuring that a slope is can be maintained stable. So this lecture deals with the slope stabilization methods or methods for enhancing stability of slopes. So we have various methods of slope stabilization in the book. The slope stabilization methods are generally reduce driving forces and basically increase the resisting forces or sometimes both. So the slope stabilization methods generally reduce the driving forces which are causative forces for instability and increase resisting forces. The driving forces can be reduced by excavation of the material from the unstable portion what it is called is the head portion and drainage of the water to reduce the hydrostatic pressures acting on the unstable zone. So if you are able to do removal of the material from the unstable zone and the draining of water to reduce the hydrostatic pressure acting on unstable zone one way this can lead to reduction in the driving forces. The resisting forces can be increased by various means. Uh, primarily the drainage that increases the shear strength of the ground the draining of water reduces the hydrostatic pore water pressures and uh, thereby increasing the shear strength of the ground and elimination of the weak strata or the potential failure zone. So elimination of the weak strata or the potential failure zone or uh, you know in a way uh, with some of the techniques what we do is that we reinforce uh, the unstable zone with a stable zone. And the building of retaining structures or other supports by retaining by retaining the soil with an appropriate retaining solution, there is a possibility that the resisting forces can be increased. Another method, which is chemical treatment to increase the shear strength of the ground, one of the prominent method which is used being used is by lime stabilization that is called by lime columns or some lime slurry injection which results in a sort of hardening chemical hardening. So the slope stabilization methods generally reduce driving forces increase the resisting forces or both then the resisting forces can be increased by you know primarily by drainage that increases the shear strength of the ground elimination of the weak strata or the potential failure zone and building of retaining structures at an appropriate location and there are also some techniques where if in case if the if there is a deep seated failure then you need to adopt a technique where the forces are transferred to the deeper strata and this is called piled slope stabilization and to retain the soil at the surface level there is a method which is used for called suppressor walls which are attached to these piles. And the fourth method what we said is that the chemical treatment which actually can results in hardening and increase the shear strength of the ground. Unloading which is one of the method to reduce the driving forces within a sliding mass. Suppose if there is a portion which is being subjected to slide or then unloading is one type of a method where the slope stabilization technique to reduce the driving forces. So next this thing is excavation is a common method to increase the stability of a slope by reducing the driving forces that contribute to the movement. 
this excavation in the sense that this includes removing the weight from the upper part of the slope that is called head of the slope and removing all unstable or potentially unstable materials all unstable or potentially unstable materials and flattening of slopes and benching of slopes. So flattening of slopes in the sense that the slope which is actually having a steep inclination can be made flattened and this you know reduce increases the you know also the stability of a slope and benching basically the provision of benches or berms increases the stability of a slope. So with an appropriate design there is a possibility that the stability of a slope can be enhanced by removing the weight from the upper part of the slope or removing all unstable or potentially unstable materials and flattening of slopes and benching of slopes. The flattening of the slopes basically in this particular figure a cross section of a slope is shown the slope which is the profile which is actually shown here is a one which is actually steeper than the slope section which is shown here too is slightly flatter. Let us assume that with, uh, uh, with slope cross section 1 this is the potential failure surface L1 and uh, with the slope cross section 2 uh, that means that uh, the slope of 2 is flatter than the slope of 1 and uh, the, sur the, the slip surface or potential failure surface is L2. So the flattening of the slope not only reduces the driving forces but also tends to force the failure surface deeper into the ground. So the flattening of the slope not only reduces the uh, driving forces but also tends to force the failure surface deeper into the ground. So uh, one of the options is that flattening of the slopes but many times if uh, any structures which are actually present, uh, present close to the uh, you know surface of the slope there is a possibility that the flattening uh, option uh, may not be uh, viable. The another popular method to increase the stability of a slope at the downstream particularly is to is the provision of rock fill buttress. The rock fill buttress provision of rock fill buttress is nothing but a simple method basically to increase the slope stability and this is basically to increase the counter uh, reaction at the downstream of the slope that is especially at the toe of the slope and which uh, counterforce the resisting uh, failure. So the rock fill buttress uh, basically consists of uh, with uh, stones rather than uh, soil uh, if you use this uh, buttress material or a riprap instead of soil uh, it is uh, it is preferable because the frictional resistance uh, between the uh, these granular or stones uh, is high and uh, has the you know resistance again good resistance against the shear forces or disturbing forces and uh, same time uh, the slope is actually devoid of water because of the free draining capability of these uh, buttress materials which are nothing but the stones. So rock fill buttress is basically a simple method to increase the slope stability basically this is uh, done in hilly areas where uh, you know uh, particularly when the slopes are actually constructed or highway or transport highway highway or railway networks are constructed by using cut and fill methods in order to increase the stability of a slope at downstream end it is advisable to provide rock fill buttresses depending upon the necessity which to increase the slope stability and to increase the weight of the this basically is to increase the weight of the material at the toe and which creates the counter force that resists the force but this riprap uh, which is uh, provided uh, is uh, to be uh, in the form of uh, stones instead of soil because it has a greater frictional resistance uh, to the shear forces and is also a, has excellent free draining capabilities. Then another uh, very recent technique which is uh, coming up uh, we said that uh, the removal of uh, material from the head of the slope but uh, if sometime we need you know a certain elevation to be maintained and but at the head of the slope we need you know the, the so called the slope profile has to be maintained the one of the you know very recent techniques is to use lightweight materials traditionally 
sawdust and other materials are used but the sawdust actually is prone for biodegradability uh, so in view of that uh, it is to be uh, it has to be protected against the biodegradability up to some extent uh, so in the recent past uh, there is uh, a technology which is called uh, use of geofoam uh, in slope stabilization particularly eps is nothing but expanded polystyrene uh, which is the which comes in blocks of different sizes and they can be placed one above the other like which is actually shown here and uh, the fill mass volume can be achieved and then uh, and this uh, pavement system and other uh, aspects can be provided so here this uh, this it should have a cover uh, which actually prevents uh, you know uh, the intrusion of uh, any other uh, uh, into matter into the uh, into this uh, particular uh, zone and uh, these uh, geofoam uh, uh, is actually available in different uh, densities basically uh, varies from uh, 12 kg per meter cube to about 40 50 kg per meter cube and uh, depending upon the type of application one need to select uh, uh, you know a particular type of uh, uh, geofoam and for this type of uh, application uh, reasonably uh, as there are compressive high compressive stresses uh, it is uh, uh, maybe it advisable to go for high density geofoam materials but however uh, there are uh, by using uh, this material it is a very advantageous uh, to reduce the uh, the uh, weight at the head of the slope and uh, but it actually has got uh, you know a particular failure modes and the failure modes can actually happen within the soil without uh, interacting or interfering with the blocks so there can be external instability internal stability and pavement system failures so the major components of an EPS block geofoam system after Arenello et al 2009 is actually shown here. So this is a portion this is the fill mass which is with EPS blocks and a soil cover you can see that the soil cover and sometimes here also they, they provide the soil cover, intermediate soil covers depending upon the requirement and this is the pavement system and uh, this is the existing slope material which is regraded and provided and the binching is provided to uh, you know ensure the enough uh, resistance along the uh, this particular surface and this is the lower slope and this is the upper slope so one way it is actually used uh, very widely nowadays uh, with uh, uh, you know particular uh, type of uh, materials called eps block geofoam but uh, as we said uh, there are uh, uh, different types of failures the first and foremost is uh, you know uh, from the uh, you know localized failures within the uh, you know soil that is the downstream failure and a global failure here and the upper slope uh, failure that is above the uh, this thing above the uh, this uh, uh, portion where uh, you know lightweight material is provided and uh, this particular uh, type of failure is uh, film uh, is actually failure surface passing through the uh, blocks as well as the downstream surface as well as here also in the up, upstream portion so there can be you know possible potential failures so while designing this uh, these uh, failure surfaces have to be ensured um, have to be uh, checked so that the adequate uh, stability can be uh, uh, ensured so uh, so while using for uh, the stability analysis the appropriate uh, strength properties of the uh, geofoam need to adopt it and uh, as well as uh, you know their unit weights uh, uh, can be obtained and can be used in the analysis. The other failure which is uh, in case of uh, seismic uh, instability uh, the, the blocks can actually uh, you know slide all together that means that if there is uh, an excitation force because this the resistance is very low as the weight is very low there can be you know a force which actually can make the blocks to slide. So involving the horizontal sliding of the entire embankment so this is one danger in case of you know seismic stability and this is an external seismic stability failure involving overturning of an entire you know geofoam portion. So this part of the figure which is below in this slide you know ensures shows the external seismic stability failure involving the water turning of an entire vertical embankment about the toe of the embankment. Then 
in this particular slide there is a, this is a type of internal stability failure where internal seismic stability failure where there is a slippage between the blocks that means that the magnified version which is actually shown here where the core soil will be subjected to disturbance and there is a slippage which actually happens between these two blocks block surfaces. So these need to be ensured and there are some means of in the field means of ensuring the stability by an appropriate anchoring from one block to another block so that the entire system behaves like a the monolithic unit and this is another type of internal failure where a local bearing failure of the blocks will happen and this is actually can cause when because the external load or stress which is actually more than the compressive strength of the blocks then there is a possibility that these you know bearing failure of the blocks can can occur and which can lead to you know an internal stability failure as far as EPS geofoam slope system is concerned. In addition to that there can be some pavement cracking failures which can cause because of this. So these are the you know as a with the technology there is also the different modes of failures are discussed basically to you know make aware of the need of you know understanding which is required in this area. So then the another appropriate technique for enhancing the stability of the slope what we discussed is the drainage so that the drainage of water reduces the hydrostatic pressure and so the shear strength of the ground can be enhanced. So adequate drainage of the water is the most important element of a slope stabilization scheme for both existing as well as the potential slopes prone to failure. So the adequate drainage of water is the most important element of a slope stabilization scheme for both existing as well as the slopes which are actually prone for failure. So drainage is effective because it increases the stability of the soil and reduces the weight of the solid sliding mass and drainage you know the, the way of you know providing this draining of water from the slope there can be two ways one is called surface drains and subsurface drains. Uh, the surface drains uh, can, uh, can be through either surface ditches along the slope which is uh, uh, done in highway embankments, shallow surface uh, subsurface drains or surface drainage is especially important the, uh, uh, at the head of the slide basically so that the water is diverted where a system, cut, uh, where a system uh, of cut off ditches that cross the head well of the head wall of the slide and lateral drains to lead the runoff around the edge of the slide basically they are effective. So the drainage techniques are basically the two types one is the surface drainage and the other one is the subsurface drainage. The surface drainage can be through the either surface ditches or shallow subsurface drains. The basic surface drainage system is actually at the head of the slide that is at the top where the system of cut off ditches. Uh, that cross the head wall of the uh, slide and lateral drains uh, lead to the runoff and the edge of the slides basically they are effective. So the drainage uh, techniques uh, in continuation the factor of safety against any potential surface that passes below the periodic surface can be improved by uh, you know a subsurface drainage. So that means that uh, in the subsurface drainage uh, the, the methods which can be used are the drainage blankets, trenches, cut off drains and horizontal drains. So factor of safety of in any potential surface slip surface or a failure surface and that passes below the periodic surface can be improved by subsurface drainage. The methods that can be used to accomplish subsurface drainage are drainage blankets and in the form of trenches and cut off drains and horizontal drains and another method is called relief wells basically the function of these relief wells is to lower the water pressure in layers that are deep down the down in the subsoil. So the primarily these subsoil layers where the water has to be drained cannot be reached by open excavation system. So in such situation relief wells is a type of subsurface drainage technique which is adopted. The primary function of this is to lower the water pressures in layers that are deep down the into the subsoil and the another 
technique is the drainage tunnels or galleries uh, when there is a requirement of substantial number of horizontal drains and this is actually substituted by a drainage tunnel to you know the drain the water. So various uh, subsurface uh, drainage techniques are drainage blankets and uh, trenches, cut off drains, horizontal drains and relief wells and uh, drainage tunnels and we said that the relief wells which are uh, you know when it cannot be reached by open excavation for a particular subsoil layer then relief wells are, in insta uh, are installed and the drainage tunnels or galleries basically they are provided uh, when there is a requirement of substantial number of uh, drains horizontal drains then it is substituted by a, uh, a tunnel or drainage tunnel or a drainage gallery. Then as I said another uh, uh, prominent and uh, popular uh, technique of uh, uh, retaining the soil is uh, slope stabilization using retaining walls. Uh, the different types of retaining walls are used like the gravity retaining walls which is a common uh, uh, application. The other application is uh, to use uh, uh, cantilever retaining walls or reinforced concrete retaining walls or uh, sometimes uh, uh, when there is uh, uh, you know re, uh, re availability abundant availability of the stones locally then uh, nowadays the gabion retaining walls are also very popular and uh, very recently uh, the soil tire retaining walls which are also becoming popular wherein the used or uh, the tires which are uh, uh, the waste materials like uh, the tires which are actually used uh, in a fashion to with the, it, the tire material actually forms the facing of the uh, facing of the uh, wall and then they are con, they are actually used with a particular uh, technique to basically to construct soil tire retaining wall to retain the slope or to uh, you know in, uh, ensure the uh, slope stabilization using a particular type of retaining wall. So this uh, provision of the gabion walls is nothing but uh, it has actually has uh, 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 gabion baskets and they are filled with uh, a selected amount of stones which are actually shown here and which actually ensures uh, you know because of the excellent uh, drainage characteristics they ensure uh, the drainage of the uh, you know water and uh, to prevent uh, or to loss of the fine soil particles there is a requirement of provision of uh, a filter layer which is uh, right behind the surface so that this ensures uh, this is done in the form of a nano by placing a nano geotextile fabric right behind the uh, you know this uh, surface so that uh, this will not allow the water the to take away the fine soil particles. So this is uh, uh, as I said uh, another uh, type of stabilizing the slope by using retaining walls and these retaining walls uh, previously started with uh, uh, with uh, steel reinforcements. Nowadays uh, we have uh, the steel reinforcement elements are substituted by the polymer strip reinforcements and uh, uh, which are high strength in nature and they are used for, uh, for uh, retaining constructing these uh, uh, retaining walls and in addition to that there are also now uh, the polymer uh, materials like uh, polyester geogrids uh, which are actually uh, used. Uh, particular uniaxial geogrids are used to retain the slope, slope mass and also uh, in the, with this uh, technique uh, there is a possibility that uh, because of its flexibility uh, that it does not require uh, any nominal foundation because uh, if the uh, soil which is uh, uh, available is actually having adequate uh, bearing capacity then it does not require it requires a simple foundation about a mud bed depth of about 1 meter and uh, it ensures also vertical phase so that uh, the additional uh, roadway and uh, there is a possibility of uh, you know uh, at the upstream and downstream end uh, the right of way can be used for uh, other applications at highway transitions and all. Though we provide these retaining walls but if uh, the failure surface is such that it is uh, uh, traversing uh, beneath the uh, retaining wall then the provision of this uh, retaining technique uh, may not be useful. So here uh, after uh, uh, Grunmond Borden Mechanic uh, Handbook 2001 a gabion retaining wall which is subjected to excessive uh, uh, forces 
can actually see here the uh, the the uh, deformed uh, gabion wall can be seen here this particular portion and this is the failure surface which is actually passing uh, right below the uh, retaining wall. So in such situation the slope stabilization is using right retaining walls uh, may, may be not an appropriate solution. So in such situations uh, popularly uh, techniques called uh, uh, the slope stabilization by using vertical piles is an option wherein uh, it allows one to transfer the loads to the deeper stratas. So this particular technique uh, by name slope stabilization using vertical piles so in this uh, a typical cross section which is actually shown here a slope cross section having a certain uh, slope and this is the toe of the slope and this is the unstable soil and this is the say stable soil and this is the slip surface or a failure surface. So assume that the piles the question is that and the piles are you know placed in a row a row of stabilizing piles embedded within the slope which is actually prone for failure. So that is what actually this sketch is actually shown the distance between these two that is called the spacing of these piles and D is the diameter. So this technique works in a in a way it actually mobilizes the resisting forces and by transferring the the forces to the deeper status. So in such situations what will happen is that where the retaining structures survivability is question and this particular technique by using vertical piles is is an is a viable option. So here it is very important to realize and to understand is that where to locate these piles particularly whether at the toe or whether at the crest of the slope or in the mid distance and another question which is required to be understood is that what is what should be the spacing. So some of the you know studies which we have actually carried out at IIT Bombay. Uh, and uh, the studies in the recent past studies which are actually being carried out at uh, uh, elsewhere indicates that uh, a phenomenon uh, called uh, arching plays a trivial low, uh, role uh, in ensuring the mechanism of uh, um, this uh, uh, pile slope stability uh, technique. So here according to Yoon and Ellis 2009 uh, so here uh, a, the similar cross section is shown here and this is the you know pile loading from the unstable uh, so the unstable mass actually has exerted a, a loading and this is the stabilizing pile and this is uh, resistance in underlying uh, uh, stable material. So if the piles are located at a distance yes uh, from the center to center so here what actually happens is that the material flows between the piles and if the piles are close enough then there is a possibility that the development of arching can take place. So arching is nothing but the transfer of transfer of the loads from the yielding portion to the non yielding portions. So here what actually happens is that the arching across the gap develops in a way what actually happens is that the pile become active in supporting the uh, you know are restraining the unstable uh, soil mass. So here and uh, another uh, uh, way of uh, uh, arrangement of these piles is also called as staggered arrangement. In this case what will happen is that you actually have uh, two piles which are actually placed and then there will be a uh, pile which is actually placed uh, at the center so like this. So when this when this actually has a portion the, the arrangement when it is done like this then what if, then it is called as a staggered arrangement so then it is not called as a discrete row it is actually called as a uh, staggered arrangement. So there are two patterns one is called discrete row of vertical piles or otherwise a staggered arrangement of the vertical piles and uh, uh, so here this is again uh, a similar typical picture which is actually shown after uh, Ashore and uh, Ardalan 2012 where the load which is actually applied on the pile surface pile on the pile and the soil pile resistance which is actually shown here. So the driving force induced by displacement soil mass about the sliding surface is actually shown which is used in the analysis to derive these things. So the next method which is 
also by the reinforcement or inclusion is the slope stabilization using anchors basically the this is this is basically the permanent grouted anchors have been extensively used to provide vertical and lateral support to natural and engineered structures during the past six decades so the slope stabilization using using anchors basically here a row of anchors when they are actually placed at certain inclination and the possibility that the slope actually can have you know can have can can have a better stability so in this case the grouted anchors with fixed length and free length and basically provide vertical and lateral support to the natural and engineered structures during the past six decades so the end type of anchorage where the tendon is grouted below the potential surface has been used to stabilize the dangerous slopes to a specified safety factor because of the significant technical advantages resulting due to substantial cost savings and reduced construction period wherein it involves simply a driving of these making a borehole and driving installing a tendon and the grouting the fixed length portion and then making the anchor active by applying a desirable force so which makes the slope so this is basically an active anchor wherein it generates the you know resistance because of the embedded anchorage with the resulting due to grouting which actually done in the the fixed length portion sometimes if there is a bedrock or a rock outcrop is there then the soil is actually anchored to the rock outcrop otherwise if it is done in soil it is mandatory to do a verification test particularly a plow test at the plow test of the anchor basically to check the anchor capacity for which is designed and available at the site is in order or not so in this particular slide what we have we have studied is that we try to introduce ourselves to the slope stabilization using anchors now here in this particular slide a cross section of the slope is shown wherein we have the inclination of the anchor which is at an angle theta with the horizontal and the this is the potential failure surface which is actually assumed and this is the angle with the alpha with the horizontal and this is the a particular slice having width b and weight w so here s is nothing but the soil shear strength and this is the normal reaction which is actually from the soil now here this particular force p which is nothing but the anchor force or tension in the anchor acts in this direction so here there is the two approaches which are actually used one is that they are using the reaction of the resolving the forces like this p along failure surface as well as taking it vertical that means that p sin theta in this direction and p cos alpha plus theta in the along the surface in this direction so there is also the another school of thought to you know instead of this instead of resolving like this resolving in the form of like resolving like along the horizontal surface that is p p cos alpha plus theta and this is this is nothing but p sin alpha plus theta which is normal to the failure surface normal to the failure surface so it actually p sin plus alpha theta minus n that is the net force which actually acting at the base of the slice so this we will try to see one is conventional effect is vertical effect vertical approach other one is the normal approach so the safety factor of the slopes stabilized with anchors can be calculated by the following two approaches what we said is that vertical effect approach conventionally used in practice and normal approach that's what resolving with slopes with resolving p one of the components is normal to the slope surface so thus the safety safety factor for the vertical effect approach is can be given by factor of safety one is equal to this is with the modified bishops method and m alpha is nothing but cos alpha plus sin alpha into tan phi by factor of safety so here where p is the actual tension per unit width and theta is the angle to indicate the orientation of the anchors so we also required to know what is the position of this anchor from the toe of the slope 
and uh, for a given uh, slope inclination and what is the uh, the uh, inclination of the anchor with the horizontal that is theta which is optimum which actually which can ensure the highest uh, factor of safety. So the, uh, the safety factor for the normal effect with the particular resolution like has been discussed is that p sin plus alpha theta p cos plus alpha theta where safety factor for the normal effect approach can be obtained by dissolving axial tension in the anchor into two components namely normal and tangential to the normal and tangential to the base of the slice where the slip surface intersects the anchor where the slip surface intersects the anchor. So at this portion where we actually dissolve uh, the forces as normal to the slip surface that is p sin alpha plus theta that is the component of p and this is nothing but p cos, cos of alpha plus theta. The tangential component of the axial tension was assumed to be have no influence on the normal force at the base of the slice where the slip surface intersects with the uh, anchor. So the factor of safety of the uh, slope which is reinforced with the anchors uh, can be uh, obtained by normal uh, approach normal approach norm with, uh, by considering this, this particular type of resolving with considering the normal uh, component of the uh, anchor tension we get this expression like this where uh, summation cb plus w tan phi plus p sin alpha plus theta cos alpha tan phi by m alpha. Uh, so here you can see that both resisting forces and driving forces are getting modified. So this actually uh, likelihood of uh, giving the higher factor of safety. So the reinforcing mechanism of uh, anchors in slopes can be explained using additional shearing resistance induced by the axial tension on the slip surface. The additional shearing resistance was given more rationally by the normal approach than the conventional vertical approach. So in this uh, what we would like to impress upon is that the normal approach is actually is uh, uh, actually um, provides additional shear resistance induced by the axial tension than the uh, conventional vertical approach and uh, for a type which is actually considered uh, by Kai and Ugai 2003 uh, type of slope with a type of material what they have used uh, with one vertical one horizontal slope for that uh, it is uh, found that from their analysis that uh, you know the all uh, the stabilizing effect was optimal when theta is in the range of 7.5 7 to 22.5 degrees and the anchor position is 2 meter horizontally from the crest of the one vertical uh, one horizontal slope. So in stabilizing the slope with the anchors what we understood is that this uh, the stabilizing effect will be optimal and it found to depend upon uh, the slope inclination and the anchor position uh, which is uh, also need to be looked upon. So that uh, the optimum uh, angle of inclination optimum position of the anchor along the slope surface ensures a better slope stability by using anchors. So here uh, this particular slide uh, a typical uh, application is actually shown and uh, this is the, the sliding portion and uh, this is uh, uh, the resulting with the, in the anchor which is actually in place an active anchor uh, and uh, where you can see that the failure surface is actually uh, subjected to uh, a so called compressive force which actually makes uh, uh, the unstable force and to uh, feel like it tied with uh, stable uh, ground and this is the fixed length portion this is the free length portion and uh, the, uh, the this particular uh, uh, anchor uh, the this is actually a sheet and uh, this is the anchor with spacers and this is actually shown so basically this ensures uh, uh, the uh, stability uh, by uh, providing the frictional resistance at the uh, you know uh, beyond the failure surface. So mobilization through the pre stressing in case of active and relative displacement in case of passive. So basically here there are active anchors and passive anchors the passive anchors in the sense that the soil movements make the mobilization of the tension in case of uh, uh, pre stressing or uh, what you call is active is that uh, without any soil movements wherein what uh, we tend to do is that we apply pretension to these anchors and uh, and uh, lock the uh, you know the arrangement which is actually shown here this is uh, a 
concrete uh, uh, slab arrangement on the slope surface this is the anchor after applying uh, adequate uh, uh, pretension and these are uh, locked here so this actually ensures these are the, the active anchors and this is something like uh, to have both green vegetation as well as uh, uh, you know a support this is some, something like called uh, uh, grid type of beams which are actually used popular nowadays uh, in number of uh, applications. So this uh, type of uh, this thing is actually after uh, Wakaigo 2012 wherein uh, this type of uh, you know uh, applications are actually happening in the practice. The another technique uh, which uh, uh, is actually used uh, for uh, stabilizing uh, uh, slopes particularly uh, clay slopes uh, soft clay slopes or silty clay slopes wherein uh, so basically this uh, stone columns is a replacement uh, technique and which is used for uh, improving the ground enhancing the load carrying capacity but uh, there is uh, uh, because of the in the stone columns what will happen is that or a granular column or a uh, uh, the replacement of the soil actually happens and uh, the, the soil is replaced with a, a stone charge or a granular material the, the stone columns are basically having a diameter of about uh, uh, ranging from uh, 400 mm to 1000 mm uh, to 1200 mm uh, basically here uh, what will happen is that the the soil borehole which is actually play uh, done with a drilling and uh, sometimes vibro floats which are actually used and then the material is actually supplied so in this way the use of the uh, if it is done on the downstream of the road the existing road uh, can be used for uh, the placement of the rigs and then drilling the uh, the uh, boreholes for installing the stone columns so basically here in this particular slide a typical slope which is actually stabilized with the stone columns which is actually shown here and if this is the potential failure surface and it has to be ensured that you know this stone column traverses at a certain depth beneath the failure surface and and it is also required to understand the lateral stability of these stone columns particularly when they are subjected to shear so it will be interesting say for example to perform certain tests wherein whether this particular you know the the at this interface and whether it is adequate to have you know adequate restraining forces or not but in this also there are different types of patterns of arrangements one is the uh, like what we use in soft ground improvement uh, uh, the square layout or uh, uh, staggered pattern so in the uh, staggered pattern or what we say that uh, the uh, in, uh, it is also called as uh, the in, in plan um, they look like uh, the stone columns are placed or uh, positioned at uh, equilateral, equilateral triangular pattern wherein uh, what will happen is that uh, you have s is the spacing and each side of an equilateral triangle is actually having a size of s so with that what will happen is that that actually equilateral triangular pattern and square arrangement out of this for as far as the soft ground improvement is concerned the equilateral triangular pattern was found to have superior performance so here also for this slope stabilization using stone columns the equilateral triangular pattern may provide uh, you know adequate resistance and then provide uh, uh, higher average uh, shear resistance so uh, this is actually designed uh, by using the uh, the similar concepts which are actually adopted that is the uh, here this is the uh, load which is actually apportioned by stone column as well as the ground so this uh, ratio which is actually called as a stress concentration and uh, here in this portion the uh, there are two methods one is the average shear strength method the other one is that to estimation of the shear strength by involving this you know the stress apportioned by the stone column and the ground so this is the equilateral triangular pattern arrangement which is actually shown here and here this is the the square arrangement pattern s is the spacing and here also s is the spacing and d is the diameter of the diameter of the stone column these are in the plan and this is in the cross section so 
the uh, the another approach which we are actually going to discuss which is actually called the average shear strength approach which is the popular and once uh, we get the average shear strength uh, uh, parameters based on the a type of layout which is actually adopted for improving the stability of a slope then those average shear strength parameters can be used and then conventional slope stability analysis can be performed and uh, which actually can be used for uh, getting the the effect of the stone columns on the slope stability so there are uh, the softwares which actually can uh, you know adopt this scheme and then give the factor of safeties one of the examples is the tal run which actually has got a facility to incorporate stone columns and then different layouts to induce to calculate the factor of safety of the effect of the stone columns so here in this the stability calculations are carried out by using conventional slope stability analysis once we get the average cohesion and uh, friction. So here C average is actually given as CC into 1 minus AR plus CS into AR where CC is equal to 1 minus AR and CS is equal to 0 for uh, uh, stone column. So CS is equal to 0 for uh, stone column. So tan phi average which is nothing but 1 minus AR into tan phi C uh, plus SR into AR tan phi S uh, divided by 1 plus AR into SR minus 1 when SR is nothing but 1 plus SRV minus 1 cos alpha and gamma average is nothing but 1 minus AR into gamma C plus 1 plus AR into gamma S. So the different notations we will look into it. So the notations are nothing but C average is nothing but average cohesion to be used for the treated soil and CC is the cohesion, cohesion of the in situ soil or the ground and cohesion of the stone CS in case of a stone charge it is 0 that is what is actually told in the previous slide to average is nothing but average weighed shear strength within the area tributary to the stone column that is within the unit cell and SR is the stress ratio which is also indicated as small n uh, appropriate to the orientation of the failure surface at the location and SRV is nothing but the ratio of uh, sigma C to sigma, sigma S to sigma S the stress ratio or vertical stress in the stone column divided by that in the uh, in situ soil being uh, uh, the strong material the stone column actually uh, apportions a higher portion of the stress than the uh, surrounding soil and AR is nothing but uh, pi d square where d is the diameter divided by 4 s square for square array and uh, then AR is equal to pi d square by 4 s square cos 30 uh, this is for triangular pattern of arrangement. Then we have the some other variables which actually we have used tau c is equal to the shear strength of the in situ soil and tau s is the shear strength of the stone column. Then sigma s is nothing but the effective stress due to weight of the column and the applied loading where gamma z and s mu s and the various other parameters like vertical stress in the in situ soil and alpha is the angle of inclination of the failure surface from the horizontal and mu s is nothing but SRE plus 1 plus SRV minus 1 into AR where phi is the internal friction of the angle of the stone generally these stone columns are actually having a stone charge which ranging from 10 mm to 40 50 mm size of the particles and then they have the basically in the gravel or you know in that particular range. So wherein it actually has got excellent friction angle. Uh, depending upon the type of the stone so it actually can have friction angle ranging from 38 to 42 44 degrees and the internal friction angle of the in situ soil phi c in case of uh, undrained case where saturated then phi c is equal to 0 and then phi average is the average internal friction angle of the treated soil and the gamma average is nothing but the average unit weight of the treated soil that is actually composite uh, soil which is nothing but uh, uh, stone column reinforced ground unit weight and gamma c is nothing, nothing but the unit weight of the in situ soil and gamma s is nothing but the unit weight of the stone. So these were the this was the method where the average shear strength parameters are estimated by using the method which is described below and this allows us to perform the stability analysis by using stone columns with that there is a possibility that we can actually ensure and then one of the other attributes of using stone columns is that. Uh, because of their excellent uh, drainage characteristics the stone columns actually has the uh, you know a uh, 
possibility of having uh, uh, you know allowing for uh, excellent drainage. So this is uh, a particular uh, uh, case study which was uh, uh, done by uh, Keller India that Keller Ground Engineering India Private Limited in 2007 in one of the uh, ports uh, below the, uh, the berthing structure particularly below the berthing structure when uh, the uh, what happens is that uh, the slopes which are actually excavated to a certain uh, depth uh, basically these are these are excavated up to minus 15 minus 16 depending upon uh, you know the requirement of the heavy duty ships to come close to the berthing structure. So with that what will happen is that the slopes basically of uh, clay in nature and uh, very soft in nature. So with that what will happen is that there is a possibility that uh, uh, the uh, slopes undergo failures. There are cases of failures which are actually reported in uh, Kandla Port Trust wherein uh, in the seventh birth uh, because of the instability caused due to failure of a uh, ground which is actually beneath the bathing structure resulted in the uh, failure of uh, piles of diameter equivalent to about 1 meter and led to the led to the you know the disturbances which actually have caused to the the failure of the uh, you know this particular slopes. So one of the viable options uh, is to you know use this uh, uh, replacement method uh, the replacing a stone uh, replacing the uh, you know the clay soft clay with uh, this uh, particular stone charge. So this is actually uh, successfully used by uh, here for a stabilizing a slope uh, below the uh, uh, below the a berthing structure and uh, in order to ensure the stability here the rock field actually is provided that's, that makes actually uh, you know the ensures uh, the, uh, the adequate stress concentration actually applied to the, uh, the stone columns and with that so here in this uh, they actually provided uh, the uh, you know these are the berthing structure uh, piles which actually have gone and this is the uh, you know the stone columns which actually have been drilled basically to ensure the, the stability of a particular slope. The another technique which uh, uh, what we discussed is the uh, slope stabilization by using uh, lime slurry. So here basically here uh, if the slope is actually having a, uh, adequate uh, uh, is suitable for this type of uh, the soil in the slope is suitable for this type of uh, uh, technique then there is a possibility that the slope stabilization using injected lime slurry is used uh, to uh, pump the lime at high pressure. So uh, this is one of the popular technique wherein uh, uh, if you are actually having existing slopes with uh, uh, for, uh, for example with uh, black cotton soils uh, which are actually having uh, low sulphates then there is a possibility that you can actually use this uh, injected lime slurry is one of the in situ method wherein uh, we can actually uh, use this uh, technique to enhance the stability of a slope. So uh, the more about uh, the slope stabilization using uh, lime slurry and lime uh, the another form of uh, you know uh, inducing or improving the, the shear strength of the uh, soil particularly for a marine clay using uh, lime columns slope stabilization using uh, lime columns and lime slurry is uh, wherein uh, the lime is injected with high pressure. So in this particular uh, lecture we try to understand about uh, methods for enhancing uh, stability of slopes we have been introduced uh, to uh, different types of slope stabilization techniques and we actually have seen the mechanism of uh, reinforcement by using anchors and in case a deeper failures do occur then we said that one of the methods which can be used is uh, the slope stabilization using piles where the forces are actually transferred to the deeper strata and uh, the piles here are used as retaining elements and uh, with, uh, used as a retaining elements to restrain the slope movements.